So about a year and a half ago, um, some of my neighbors and friends who we all live in an um, alternative back to the land community up in Mendocino County, um, we were you know, naturally just talking to each other about the industry. A lot of people there grow and um, we're like, how are we going to survive this tsunami that's coming at us? We don't even really know what that means yet. And you know, what, what can we do to like make it through and retain this like natural, like pretty sustainable, chill lifestyle out in the country. How do we continue that? And so we decided to band together and actually um, combine forces with um, two other friends. One you're going to interview, Jen, <laughs> pretty soon, I think. Um, so she was one of those. And we started working together to form Mendocino Generations, which was a farm collective that we started um, about a year and a half ago at this point. And we quickly grew from three farms to, we have 43 farms right now. And so I'm the operations director of Mendocino Generations. Um, we help farmers get compliant. We help them kind of navigate this crazy maze of new regulation and rules and you know, local and state level too. And um, we help them with marketing, branding, and so on. So we felt like you know, uh, strength through unity was like the only way we were you know, going to survive this. For the most part, we all have one unified um, goal and voice. Um, there is definitely difference in opinions on how things should go and need to go, especially because of people's personal circumstances around their permitting. And so that has maybe caused some of the biggest um, discrepancy and opinions I think but for the most part we're all really supportive of each other and you know so and so over here has a, a boundary issue we're gonna help think of solutions or you know maybe they just really want to farm and they are not attached to that land they could move and we could help them figure that out um, there's a lot of different benefits to collectively you know working together and so I get to handpick all the farmers that are in the group, which is a great benefit. I like interview them all. I get to know them. A lot of people come to me word of mouth or they know one of the other farmers in the group. And so they've heard about us and they come to find us. They seek us out. And um, so most people are pretty much on the same level. They're back to the land, sort of, you know, hippie folks in Mendo and they fit really well together. They know each other. They have good rapport. We go to each other's houses for meetings. Um, and they've developed friendships over time too that um, are you know, a bond because of this group. So some of the biggest issues that my farmers face, um, I would say at this moment, um, besides the empty pit of money that just kind of keeps going down this black hole, um, is the building and planning um, regulations, I guess would be the biggest problem at this moment. And that's just because Different agencies within our local government and the state government, I think they're putting down regulations on growers, cultivators, you know, processing facilities, distribution, like they don't really understand how we have been doing business and how this is a huge change for us. This is like, you know, takes a lot of, um, sorry to be crass, but it takes a lot of balls to do what we do. and. Um, stand up when it's kind of this gray zone about are we doing it right are we doing it legal and then what does legal mean and people are you know taking a huge leap towards compliance when really the government and these regulatory agencies in our local area don't even know what it means to cultivate they don't know what it's like they don't know how much it costs they think we're like money bags and they're trying to really um, capitalize on that and you know until they really understand that we're real people, we have real lives, we have families, you know, this is not a cash crop so much as it used to be. This is like just basic survival and doing something that we really have a lot of passion for and we love so much and that's why we're doing it now. A couple of the biggest problems right now with the building and planning department in my county is that they want us to have any building that has cannabis um, in it to be um, commercial building. Most of us out in the country where we grow cannabis in my area is pretty rural. Um, people did class K 
uh, permits a long time ago, which means the county just kind of like clean slated them, moved them along, like, here's your permit, you're all good to go. But who would have ever saw this coming? So now, how do you get your Class K garage or your shop or your dry shed to commercial compliance? It's a huge endeavor and it's going to cost a ton of money. And so now the county, because of a lot of us standing up for ourselves and what we believe in and being the squeaky wheel, you know, the squeaky wheel gets the grease these days. Like, if you go in and say, hey, I'm a real person and I have a real problem, can you help me? They're really, I think, um, open to that and learning as they go too. And so, you know, um, they're changing things a little bit to help us. So now they've created this ag exempt category where you can have a building that only touches cannabis like it doesn't really have multi-purposes in it <laughs> touches cannabis um, they're helping us by um, you can apply for an ag exempt permit for that building if it's only a single use for cannabis so a drying shed for instance or a storage shed um, so that's one big change that's happened and the next um, I would say it's positive for some people, but for other people who naturally use a building for multiple things, like aren't going to be able to have a ag exemption permit for that building, and they're still going to have to go down the road of commercial compliance. And actually, that's my case. Um, I have a building that's like a guest house on the top and a garage on the bottom, and our cure and dry and like storage rooms are all connected in one building. It's easier for power, you know, it's easier for everything. So that. Um, new regulation change is not gonna actually benefit me um, but one of the other great benefits is like um, to working with well to working with a group is I can send my farmers to go to these like board of supervisor meetings and say hey stand up for this issue can you mention this write a letter and we're all like collectively helping each other stand up for each other and that's been um, really empowering and great I would say in Mendocino County, the um, local government is pretty open to cannabis now. They were quite resistant in the beginning, um, really not caring, I don't think, that much. And a lot of them are actually coming out to farms now and visiting these facilities and meeting us one-on-one, -on -one, having personal conversations. We run into them at the grocery store. We you know, reach out at different events or we have mutual friends. And that's kind of the way we're like building a rapport with them, like, oh, these are real people. These are good people. These aren't just like, you know, crazy dope growers with like giant trucks that have all this money like they think that we all are. So um, I think that they're coming around, but I think there is still some resistance, ex especially in these new departments that are having to get involved because the state is going down the legal road, right? So some of these people in building and planning, for instance, are like, anti but because they never had to deal with us before and so once they establish friendship relationships or rapport with people we come into the office every day ask questions I'm like here representing 43 farms they're like oh you're a cool person like you're great I'm gonna help you now and so now they're starting to kind of come around and and be more friendly and it's like a regular like a it's normal more normal now with the state licensing I'm not really sure what to say about that yet um, I am nervous about it personally and I would say our collective and our farm group doesn't really fit into one of the licensure categories and so I don't really know where to go with that at this moment personally my farm it's pretty obvious um, but for the rest of it I'm not quite sure yet how that looks every day it's something new literally I open my email or I get a phone call from somebody um, they say have you heard about this Do you know about this yet or what are we gonna do about this and so um, every day it's just like I kind of feel like one of those, I'm like training for the army, you like run through the tires and then you climb the wall and then you like launch over this thing. Like every day it's something new and you just have to like just roll with it and you know, you have to be flexible or you're just not gonna survive this industry.